Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Today's topic is about joint management and conserving the forest in protected areas. Let's see what is joint management and learn further with me. The first thing we should know is, forests are a boon to mankind. We depend on forests for our survival from the air we breathe to the wood we use. They are particularly great at combating climate change by trapping a lot of carbon dioxide. But, there's bad news. At an alarming rate, millions of acres have been destroyed all around the world. Joint management is one of the methods of conserving the degraded forest. Joint management main objective are to ensure the sustainability of the environment and to enhancing the local residents' life. Joint management basically is an agreement sealed by two or more parties in protecting and managing the degraded forest. The main participants that lead the cooperation are the government and local residents. The three main stages in joint management structure and process. The first stage is a preparatory phase. Second stage is planning phase. The third stage is the implementation phase. In preparatory phase, there should be a contractual agreement between the village organization. The document need to be prepared for the establishment of the association and the selection of board. Before signing the contract, there must have a clear explanation and elaboration about the roles and responsibilities. The second phase is the planning phase. This phase are the most crucial phase of joint management. The development process provides appropriate guidance for the support and monitoring of conservation activities. While financial management is addressed in order to finance logging operations and payments of the allocation of revenues, training implementation includes a clear evaluation of the various roles delegated by the board members and specific forestry operations conducted. The last stage is implementation phase. This is where the annual action plan being prepared annually according to the budgetary resources. At this phase also the association and the participants operate the plan activities according to the management plan prescriptions. The first advantage of joint management is it become a platform of mutual commitment, interactions and experiments. Joint management is also wise when following a pragmatic and proactive strategy as the various parties react to the new circumstances. Therefore there are interesting places to learn and change. Second advantage is joint management focuses on the complexity and variety. Joint management is typically a multi-party activity but often multi-level, multidisciplinary one. Various social players have different capabilities and contribute to the control of different abilities. The collaboration stresses those complementary positions and draws on them. The third advantage is providing a guide to the learning process. In scenarios where there are uncertainty and where the process needs to be developed through action, joint management can help to provide learning guides for implementation. In other words, it offers the potential to behave without getting all the uncertain variables sorted out beforehand. Although there are many advantages of joint management, there are also disadvantages. The first challenge is communication barrier. This is attributed to poor use of vocabulary and disparities in literacy and numeracy skills. Second challenge is there are no common pattern or framework for effective joint management. Each agreement must be negotiated separately, and must respond to each local community's values and wants. This long-term cycle involves the management agency's strong sense of loyalty, and traditional owners' similarly strong sense of identity and place. Failure to accept this will lead to mistrust, disharmony and disappointment. The third challenge is the lack of confidence between the conservation partners and local participants. The impression of the group was that there were no tangible advantages arising from joint management, and that joint management intend to limit their forest rights. There are a few examples of joint management conducted in Malaysia. The first example is in Rajamuda Forest Reserve. This program involving the government, private sector and the indigenous people. The program is being implemented to conserve environmental degradation due to fire and illegal logging. 
the activity carried out is the recultivation of peat swamp forest. Next example of joint management is in Kuala Lanes North Forest Reserve. The program involves a local community, global environment center and boat plantation copyright body. The main objective is to create and maintain a sustainable management system for the peat swamp ecosystem. Joint forest management is indeed an excellent method to implement in conservation. It offers new hope to those communities that are most directly dependent on forests for their many needs while still manage the forest in a sustainable way. That's all for today's class. Hope you can gain some new knowledge from the topic. Thank you for watching. And see you next time.